Number 94. The called Dreamland had once known a golden age, but too many crimes and mysterious disappearances... Faust. Seven games of the soul. Faust is a difficult nut to crack, both literally and figuratively. It was hard to get running, and it was hard to digest, so to speak. What we have here is something of a morality play in PC adventure game format. It's pretty good overall, but does it belong at the 94 spot on AdventureGamers.com's list of the top 100 adventure games of all time? Let's get the technical stuff out of the way. This game was very difficult to get running on Windows 7. The installer won't work on Win 7, but the game actually will. So the solution is to manually install the game by copying files from disk 1 to your hard drive in a specific manner, and the game will run fine. Unless you want to record video of it at the same time, like I did, then you'll run into trouble. The other way to play it is my favorite standby solution, putting it on a Windows 98 virtual machine. But will you want to put yourself through that is the question. And I have to answer that question with... I don't know. There are moments of brilliance here, mostly in the character of Mephistopheles, but then one would expect that. He works for the devil, or he is the devil, I'm no longer sure. This game left me not sure of much. So I decided to do a little research on the original legend of Faust. Yeah, that didn't help. I guess this game is a sequel to the events of the legend? The Goethe version, anyway, and you'll know why I say that if you get to the end. Anyway, you play as Faust, who doesn't seem to remember anything outside of the fact that Mephistopheles is not to be trusted. He's instructed to discover the events that took place at a now-defunct amusement park. You jump back and forth through time, learning about the lives of the characters who lived there and how they ended. Holy shit. This game is fucking dark. We're talking murder, child slavery, suicide, blackmail, misogyny, rape, themes of loneliness, abandonment, sexuality, and obsession. This game is probably not for the easily depressed. Or the easily offended. Having said that, despite the dark content, that never feels like the prevailing mood of the game. If anything, the game feels contemplative and philosophical. This is probably mostly due to Mephistopheles and his penchant for circular discussion and speaking in riddles. When, when you're very attached to someone, you'll gladly share almost everything with them. But when you are bound to someone, you frequently find yourself wanting to keep things for yourself. That's why couples are rather like tightrope walkers, constantly trying to maintain the tenuous balance in order not to fall. Until, as they say, death do they part. Yeah. He displays a lot of the playfulness of Puck or Q, but though he tries to paint himself as neither good nor evil but necessary, he seems to delight a little too much in the carnage he causes. Despite this, I actually grew to like Mephisto, but uh, I don't know how I feel about that. Is it a good game? Yes and no. Moving around is handled using the semi-standard first-person warp to hot spots and look around with the mouse scheme that I'm very familiar with. But unfortunately, it's very hard to control the speed when you're looking. The box that determines the space that you can move the mouse in without turning the screen is very small, and the speed ramps up very fast when you're outside of it. The puzzles are mostly logical, and I didn't get terribly stumped on a lot of them, though I had no idea what the hell a homunculus was supposed to be used for. Sadly, there's an obligatory maze to get through near the end, but fortunately, this maze is neither long nor difficult. And the graphics don't really hold up well either. The PlayStation era CGI cutscenes seriously show their age with some hilariously awkward animations. This is one game that could have genuinely benefited from FMV. 
Having said that, there are some things I wouldn't have wanted to see done on or to a live person. All in all, this game is interesting and thought-provoking, and games this dark don't come around every day. But I don't know that it would have landed a spot on my top 100 list. Still, as art goes, this definitely qualifies, and unlike a lot of adventure games, this one probably has some replay value, if only to help you understand what the hell you witnessed the first time around. Next time, number 93. See that it doesn't happen again. Yes, sir, Mr. Schmaltz. I'm sorry.